it's Alan from Plangora, and it's been quite a while, but I think I'm going to catch you guys up onto some Phoenix Live View again. Now, one of the things I talked about in a previous episode was about how we do the updates. And um, I saw that we can do actually an append only, and that works quite good. But now the only problem with the append though is when you do the append, you actually lose some functionality, such as say um, any kind of uh, updates or deletes. Well, I'm going to show you guys actually how you can get the append plus uh, updates, um, but I'm just going to do the, the basically deletion. So I'm going to show you guys how we can keep the append, but we can also do a deletion of a user. So let's go ahead, let's get started. Now, the only way to actually do this is we have to go to Mix, and we need to update to the latest version of LiveView, uh, at least the latest stable version, which is 4.1. So let's do Mix Steps Git. And let us go to um, Assets, and we need to do our npm install dash dash force phoenix live view, if you guys remember, so we get the latest uh, JavaScript version. Great, let's not worry about all the vulnerabilities, it's not really a big deal, because I'm just showing you guys how to do this. Um, of course you want to handle that by yourself. Now, here's the thing, is what we actually need to do is we need to make a component. Now components are like a what I would call a slim down version of a live view. And the first thing I want to do is I want to go into here, so in my view section, and we need to make an edit because this is a, a brand new kind of view. And I'm gonna pull it from the other side. So we want to basically extend this we want to add in uh, live link is so much, but this is actually the what we really need is this live component part. So add in the live component because we're going to be pulling in a component. And the other thing I want to do is I'm going to grab all of this. Oops. Grab this live view section. Copy this paste it and I'm going to make a live component and instead of use Phoenix live view we're going to use use Phoenix live component and basically everything else is the same and let me see that should be enough to kind of get us going now let's go ahead let's make a new uh, kind of component over here. So in live, I'm going to create user row, let's just call it user row, just to make it simple. So it's going to be def module, hello live view web user row. And this one is going to be use, uh, should be, is it use, sorry, double check. Yes, use hello live view web live components. And for the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to render this one inline using the sigil. So it's capital L. And this one. And now what I'm going to do is say that if we have a user and I'm just going to go ahead and cut this from our template section so we're going to pull in from our index section and we're going to cut this part out and just paste it into here get some formatting into here And I'm going to have my user here, and my user is going to be here, 
and of course my user here. So now this is a very, very simple live view component. In fact, we can already use it already. So we just need to use a live component. Um, and then we add in our socket. And the name of our component, hello live view web, user row. And in order to kind of single it out, we're going to pass it in the user.id. Now, if we run our server, everything should be good. Oops, sorry. Everything should be good. Let's take a look. There we go. Okay, we're missing our user. Ah, very simple. So we have everything kind of working, but one more thing we need to do is we need to actually assign the user. So we assigned it the ID. I'm going to show you guys something. So if you have just a simple component and you want to render it like this, you can just use. Uh, there's actually like an update that we can call. That we can call it's kind of like a mount, basically. It takes the uh, assigns and the socket. And then we can grab our user. So I'm also going to alias the hello live view accounts. And then we call accounts dot get user. We pass in the assigns ID. So we passed in before. And we just return a simple, I believe it should be a, it's an OK. And we assign the socket with the user and of course our user. Now, what I want to show you is that if you check this out over here, we actually have quite a few queries going on. So we have our initial user query, and then every single one of these queries is going to happen one by one. Now, you can tell that if we have about, say, 50 rows, it's going to be basically at least 51 queries happening, which is definitely not good. Now, we can actually make this a lot better. Uh, the nice part about these components is that actually they can group them together. Uh, you can actually group these together to create a nice little update. So we can basically preload all these. Uh, it's important to remove this because this will always be called. But what we need is we just can preload and we can have our list of assigns. So this is just going to be a list of all the different assigns. For all the different components in there. They're of the same type, of course. And we can get our list of IDs. We can map through the list of assigns. We can use our anonymous function. We just grab the ID. So for every single assigns, we just grab the ID. And then we can go ahead and we can pull out our users. Okay. Now what I need to do is I need to go back into my code. I'm going to add a couple of things to make things a little bit easier. So we have our uh, create user, get user. So we have our list users, right? What I also want to do is uh, basically get a list of so list users by IDs. It's going to take in a list of IDs. And now in this case, what we can do is we can call un user and we just get all of the users which their ID is inside of that list of IDs. And I'm going to also uh, group them into a tuple. Use the ID as kind of like the first key, and of course the user itself. And then I'm going to, of course, grab them all. So now if we go back to over here, what we can do is we're going to get all of our users. And uh, we're going to get our list of IDs. 
pipe that into our new main function. So accounts dot uh, list users by IDs. And the next thing I want to do is because I have it in you know a tuple with ID and the uh, actual user itself, I can just put this into a map, and I will show you why. Because what we can do next is that we can then map uh, the users. I'm oh, sorry. We can map the list of signs and for each one of those so it's going to be every single component we can just apply that user itself so basically they're going to be all preloaded so for those assigns we're going to pop in the user and we'll just use the original assigns ID so I know it's a little bit too much so I'll just walk you through a little bit more so in here in this list, in this list of assigns, is going to be like this, with the ID and a user ID inside, and then we can basically just what we're going to end up doing over here is we're just going to be uh, transferring that into ID with the user ID, and then user with an actual user. This is basically what we're doing over here. So we should have a, a much, much better time. Now if I refresh, let's see, is it dot somewhere? Uh, this part, sorry, this one should be an and one. Put, sorry, map that new. There we go. And now we just have two queries running, right? You see that instead of having these kind of multiple queries, we got like three or three of these. Now we just have two, which is fine. We get our initial list of users and then we will just query and preload them all. And that works just fine. Now, the big thing is how can we actually apply what we have to, uh, to actually remove users? So if you, if you kind of remember uh, it's been a while, so if we go back to our user index, now we no longer have that delete user. I mean, we have a delete user event over here, but it doesn't really get handled right. We we pulled it out because we're if you go back to our template, you see we're using the append. Well, now we can actually use our live component to handle our own little kind of deletions. So if we go to our user row. Now we can just add in the handle events. So these also can handle events. Put a delete into here. And we don't need the second part, but we do need to grab the assigns. Of course, our user, our socket. And when we do this, what we're going to do is we're going to use our accounts, delete user, pass in the user, and then we can just reply back, sorry, no reply, and assign socket user nil. And then of course, very quickly, we add in our button type button class is going to be button button finger. Let's add a delete. And the last thing we need to do is add our phoenix click and the method, sorry, the event is delete. So now we can just delete this user. No problem. We go back to our over here. That user was deleted. So there you go. That's how we can uh, add back in our delete and we can uh, use the append. So now we shouldn't have any issues with having lots and lots of data. So this is Alan from Plangora. Uh, apologies about the long video, but I hope to explore components a lot more. Seems they could be doing a lot more things than I originally thought they could do. 
Uh, please subscribe if you haven't, and I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks. Bye. Hi. Please feel free to ask us any questions about Elixir, Flutter, or anything else in programming. Here's our YouTube channel, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We will answer your questions every Friday. Ya mantai ge duck man all. Yo wenti ji da wen wall.